There you go, everyone. Well, welcome uh, to this session of Destination Automation. We're going to be talking about balancing innovation with security and automation. So what I'd like to do is just uh, give it a couple seconds for uh, to let us let other people join in. Uh, but in the meantime, why don't you jump on your chat and uh, let us know who you are, where you're coming from. Or maybe if you've attended a couple of sessions before, what you thought about them or what interests you in the sessions coming up. And then we'll get started right away uh, with the actual session. I will mention that we do have a Q&A tab. So if you you know put your questions there, um, we'll use a little bit of time after this to go to see if we can get some of those questions answered. Right, yeah, that would be very helpful. All right, I think, uh, Ned, do you think we can get started? I think we can. Perfect, all right, well, welcome once again, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, we're so glad you could join us in this session. And as I mentioned before, this session of Destination Automation 2021 is about balancing innovation and security with automation. Now, um, what I'd like to have everyone do is just sit back and imagine a world where all your um, all non-functional concerns are taken away and you don't have to worry about any operational activities and you can deliver more with less. And what I'm talking about is automation. I know some of you might be thinking, whoa, 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 back up the bus. This could be pretty dangerous. What about security, compliance, and governance? Well, I'm Peggy Guyot, and I'm a senior uh, customer, six, uh, and, uh, customer experience manager here at Kong. And I'm here with my colleague, Ned Harris, who's a senior solutions engineer. And today in this session, we're so excited to talk to you about why automation is important and assure you when you do it with Kong that security is always front of mind. And finally, Ned is going to show you how to do it with Kong. So the big question today is why automate? Well, let me tell you just for starters, it can make your life a, mu a much easier. And also it can save you a lot of time, but also it can also make your deployments more predictable. And you can have less bugs in your deployments. So why don't you think about how much time do you spend trying to get your APIs, your API specs approved? Is that days, weeks? What about the delay between finishing the first version of your API spec and getting that approved to start building it? I'm sure that takes a lot of time as well. Or what about how much time do you spend testing your APIs before they can be deployed? Hours, days, weeks? So what would you do if you had more time back in your week? day, a week, month, et cetera. Well, now I'd like you to sit back again and take some time to imagine a world where all you developers, operators, architects, security teams have this time back. What would you do with that time? Would you maybe take a hike in the woods and just take a breath? Maybe you're gonna develop, develop that uh, app that's gonna, uh, that's a mission critical app that's gonna get you that promotion you were looking for. Or maybe you're just so darn tired that you just wanna go home and play a video game. So my question to you is what's stopping you from doing it? Does your technology stack not support it? Or maybe your organization is worried about sacrificing security and quality for speed. Or maybe this sounds familiar to you. You're on a tight timeline to innovate and you get an email from your central API team saying stop. So of course you have to slow down and maybe potentially stop uh, developing your API. And the question is really why? Why is this happening? Well, security folks and architects just can't risk security uh, security and governance and compliance. It's just too risky. But the great news here 
is uh, the great news here today is that is, is that the, with API ops, uh, security testing and performance testing is frequent, continuous, and guaranteed because you're going to publish it in each and every I, API across the business. And with Kong, you can deploy directly from spec. And with automation, you can unleash automated security workflows so that business is as usual for the security teams. And here at Kong, to do this, we use a handful of tool, tools and it all starts from spec to, to the Kong dev portal using our in, INSO CLI. Now, as I know, as you look at this API lifecycle, you're gonna say, well, nothing's really exciting or new here. But best practice means that we're gonna start off by designing our APIs. We're gonna write our specs. We're gonna write tests for it. And then we're gonna validate that those specs describe an API that meets the original requirements. And if so, we go off and build it. Now, after we've implemented it, we're gonna deploy code and we're gonna publish it to the, uh, we're gonna register it in the API platform. And then on top of that, we're gonna add security and governance policies to it. And also we're gonna add operational policies to manage it. And then of course, we're gonna publish it in the dev portal for discovery and reuse. Now all this leads to great things because now the autonomy, the developer autonomy and freedom to innovate is no longer conflicting with the need to retain control for governance. So how are we gonna do this? Well, Ned is gonna walk you through uh, the process using Kong Insomnia and the CLI. As well, he's gonna show you how to take advantage of the declarative configuration file to run standardized tests against the Kong configuration in the CICD environment. So Ned, why don't I hand it over to you to get started with our demo so we can actually show everybody how this is gonna be done within uh, Kong. Yep, yeah, awesome. So if you just stop sharing, I will take over. Yeah, I think that's just the lower right. Gotcha. Thanks. There we go. Perfect. So what I'm going to do here is I will just share my screen here. And I assume everyone can see this. Peggy, you can confirm you see this? Yes, I can see it. Awesome. So basically what we're going to be demonstrating here is taking what I call a spec first approach. Now Kong has a large ecosystem and you don't have to do the spec first approach, but it is a very powerful way. So we have a lot of flexibility. So I'm going to be kind of giving you more of a deep dive in one method of kind of deploying your code using, uh, like Peggy mentioned, a tool called Insomnia. And we're going to be using basically a local development environment to kind of manage and build our spec. And that spec is going to become that source of truth for all of our configuration, including our documentation and even basically how the gateway is configured. And we're gonna be deploying this into uh, two Kubernetes clusters. Uh, we have a development cluster and we have a QA cluster. Now the idea is that these Git actions will deploy um, this configuration to a, a development cluster and give us a chance to test it. Make sure that all these policies are compliant before we send it off to the QA cluster. And again, we could use the same uh, pattern for production uh, and so on and so forth. Now we have a short amount of time, so I'm gonna be kind of getting right to the chase here, but you, you'll see a lot of the potential and hopefully uh, you can use that QA channel to ask a lot of questions as we go. Well, the first thing I wanna do is just use a little bit of suspension of disbelief and imagine, okay, that we have this open API spec that we've already set up in Insomnia and we can see we're getting a little preview of our documentation. And we have this basically tied to a Git repo. And what we've done is we've already pushed this documentation. Now, unfortunately, we are not going to pass our test because we require some basic things. Like we're going to require um, an OIDC policy and we're going to require some rate limiting policy. Now, 
with Kong, there's a number of these plugins, and I can just give you a quick preview. We have all these different plugins that we can enforce policy like OIDC, like rate limiting. So we're basically making it a test that these policies are in fact in place and even set up to the specifications that we want. Of course, when we ran this and we pushed this through up to our GitHub and we're using Git Actions, and of course you can replace Git Actions with any CI CD tool of your choice. And I'll demonstrate how we're just using a really basic uh, CLI tool called Inso. You see, we were going along fine. Everything was working. We exported the spec. We got um, you know, output to our open API specification, generated the config. We even applied the config to our development environment, but we failed this API test. And that's because we're requiring these policy guardrails to be in place, OIDC and rate limiting. Now, there really wasn't an excuse to have this happen, to be honest, because we're using Insomnia and we actually have a way to visualize these tests and see them in place. And just to show you what these tests are made of, it's just a declarative language that assumes some certain truths that are in place. And of course we can run this and it fails because, well, we don't have this policy. Well, again, I, I mentioned before that we're using a spec first approach. So what this means is that we can actually declare um, these plugins in our open API specification. And you can see I've commented them out because I'm being a little bit lazy because it's a it's a demo, but you you can imagine if I put these back in place now, and of course now we can go ahead and um, do a pull request. Now before I do, I want to bring up the fact that this did get deployed to development, so I can actually even run these commands and get results back. I can even add a new blog. This was I'm happy. I'm going to say I'm sad, right, just to make a different result. And you know, you'll see that you know these blog entries are working and we can list them all. Now this is in development. Now, of course, if I move my environment, I'll move it over to the QA. You'll see that this is definitely not working yet, right? And the reason is, is it never got deployed to QA because we never passed our test, right? So let's go ahead and we're gonna go back to um, our development environment. And if I go to our design, I can go ahead and just basically commit this. Now, of course, you could use pull requests. I'm doing quick demo mode, so I'm being a little a little expedient here, um, you know, pushing to master directly. But you can basically commit this, and we can push this. And now, now, with this change, what we'll find is if we come back to our repo here, and we go back to our git actions, we'll see that we have a new action taking place, because we just, you know, did another merge to master. And what you'll see in a second here, and let me just get this, there we go, is it's gonna start setting up the job and it's gonna go through. Now, of course, you know, CICD or, you know, basically these kind of automations are very boring demos to watch, but this should go pretty fast. And I wanna point out the reason this is working is if I go back to Insomnia, is we have a large number of these tools that are available in Insomnia. For one thing, we could take this open API spec and we can actually generate Kong config. So if I look here, I can generate this Kong config for Kubernetes. Um, we can also support our DEC declarative configuration if you're say outside of Kubernetes. And all this is generated using that open API spec as a source of truth. And you can see that it's, it's defined our plugins that we're gonna need. And it's even defined the ingress um, you know, description that we're gonna deploy. And this is the magic that Enso is doing, is it's taking that open API spec, turning that into configuration, and then taking that configuration and basically um, give, put it into the Git action so it can ultimately deploy it to those clusters. So if we come back here, um, what we're gonna find is that um, this basically should be kind of cruising along. So we're in our build deploy phase. And one second. There we go. And so what it's going to do now is it's installing Insomnia. So we're going to install that CLI tool. And so you can see it's a, just an NPM install. So a lot of this is all very, um, fits really nicely into your actions. And once that's installed, we're going to export that blog spec. And what that's going to do is it's basically going to take that open API spec that we've provided and it exports it and basically turns that into Kong configuration. And ultimately what this is gonna do next is it's gonna deploy that um, configuration to our development environment and then run those tests that we defined. Now, hopefully this time,
these tests will pass because we added the proper policy. And you can see right now we're in this configuration and we've just passed our tests. And now if I expand this, you'll see that these are now passed and we're off to the races and now we're sending it over to our QA environment and we've passed. So what does this mean? Well, it means that first off I can come back here and I can run my tests and we're now passed because we actually have that policy. In fact, if I go to this debug mode and one of the things I can do is I can come back to this blog entry and I can run this and of course it's working, but if I go and take off my basic authentication, which is the OIDC, you're gonna see we're getting unauthorized. In fact, if I come back here and send this again and look at the header, we even have our rate limiting in place. So all this policy is there. And finally, just to prove a point, I can come to my QA environment and basically run the same thing. And you can see that it's behaving the same way. And we're actually off to the races again. So, I, you know, in a short kind of quick amount of time, I tried to show you that basically all these things that I'm doing in this local development environment with Insomnia can be described through this ENSO CLI command and ultimately put into your kind of actions or your different CI CD solutions, whether that is Jenkins or these Git actions or whatever your tool, the fact that it can fit on a CI uh, or CLI run on a container that can be deployed means that we can use it for our automation and ultimately get these things to pass and put in that policy in place so that when we have these situations, we can deploy to multiple environments based on certain rules and everything we establish, and then use a large number of these plugins to enforce that policy. So with that said, I, I think we can um, maybe open up um, the Q&A and see if we can answer any of your questions that you may have. Yeah, certainly. Thanks, Ned, for that. That was uh, that was really um, good to see. It's, it's nice to see the power of automation uh, freeing up, freeing up time, and um, giving the power of uh, enabling developers to have that autonomy to innovate, uh, as well as seeing that it's as secure as, secure as possible can be uh, on your way to production. Yeah, and I, I want to point out I showed an OIDC and a rate limiting plugin just to keep things mm -hmm. simple, but we also have things like OPA or Open Policy Agent plugins. Uh, we have a large number of security you know, plugins in different ways to audit. So really the sky's the limit. It's really up to what your organization needs. Great, that makes it very flexible uh, for, um, for organizations to use what they're comfortable with. Awesome, so I'm looking, I don't see any questions so far in the Q&A, but we will definitely make ourselves available. And I would just say open the forum if there's anything, even Kong related uh, whatsoever, I'm, um, you know, so what I do for a living, I enjoy it. Uh, I love answering questions. Yeah, and we work directly with the customers uh, to help enable them to um, get uh, get the best uh, use out of Kong and be more confident in Kong and be able to get to uh, their goals and objectives more uh, more quickly as well as more efficiently. So uh, if you are a customer of Kong uh, listening in, please reach out to anyone on the on the uh, uh, see, I want to give you these tips and tricks uh, to enable you, oh, I think we might uh, to, oh, there you uh, go. yeah. So thank you everyone for joining. And okay. So it looks like, yep, go ahead. Sorry, Peggy. I just wanted to thank everybody for joining in. Uh, this short session, and hopefully you learned some new tips and tricks. And I say, don't imagine it. Uh, let's start doing it. Sounds great. Thanks, everyone. Take care.